Welcome back, everyone, to the Sports Arena here in San Diego, California. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles with a 2 to nothing lead over the San Diego Gulls. Mark Bureau scoring for Salt Lake in the first period. C.J. Young as well. No scoring in the second, and that's where we stand. A 2 nothing Eagles lead through 40 minutes of play. But one of the reasons for the Golden Eagles' tremendous success has been the man behind the bench, the head coach of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, and a nice piece done on the Salt Lake band behind the bench, and I think you'll really enjoy it. It's coming up right now. Come on, guys. That's a big kill. Now let's get a pump other than take it to him. Bob Francis has a strong relationship with hockey in Salt Lake City. As a player, Francis electrified the crowd with his scoring feats. Now he leads the young Golden Eagles as head coach. Yeah, I always had it in mind uh, when I graduated from college I wanted to be a, a coach, but uh, I didn't envision I was going to be here in Salt Lake. And uh, Towards the end of the career, uh, end of my career, Salt Lake allowed me the opportunity to pursue a coaching career as well as continue to play, and it gradually put me into the coaching ranks, and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for, for Artis in particular because he's the individual that was responsible for me to get in the coaching job in Salt Lake. Francis's ties to Salt Lake City go back for the 1980-45 season. As a centerman, Francis scored 214 points in three years, including a team leading 98 to 1986-87. That year, Salt Lake captured its first ever Turner Cup. Francis took over as head coach June 27th of 1989, becoming the 12th head coach in Salt Lake Golden Eagles franchise history. Last year, Francis led the Eagles to a second-place finish in the IHL's West Division as the team advanced to the International Hockey League semifinals. The 1990-91 season marks the second campaign for the 32-year-old North Battleford Saskatchewan native. The Francis legacy is long and successful. Bob's father, Emil, is well-known in hockey circles from his days as a pro goaltender, coach, and general manager in New York, St. Louis, and Hartford. When Francis was GM in St. Louis, his minor league affiliate was in Salt Lake City. As a parent, he is an individual that believes that everyone's his own man. And he said that the most important thing in any coach is, is his ability to communicate and to be honest uh, and never take the easy way out. Although Bob was a successful scorer in the now-defunct Central Hockey League with Birmingham, Oklahoma City, Denver, and Salt Lake, he played only 14 games in the National Hockey League with the Detroit Red Wings in 1982-83. As a matter of fact, I scored the first goal against uh, St. Louis, who happened to be my dad's team. And, uh, I scored my second goal in New York where I grew up watching my dad's team for 15 years in Madison Square Garden where I had about 25 buddies there, so I didn't score many of them, but I, made, I utilized both of them. Now as full-time coach, Francis looks forward to a long and successful career as he brings a dedicated and enthusiastic approach to the game. His goals are to develop young talent for the parent Calgary Flames and improve his own skills behind the bench. CJ Zemiroli Rick, come on guys, let's pick the tempo up here now. Uh, the one thing uh, that you learn, learn in this business is you don't try to duplicate anyone else's style because, number one, the players read through it. Number two, you're not going to be happy doing it. So uh, I'm a hyperactive individual uh, that likes to communicate with the players on the bench. Fans in Salt Lake City have been treated to outstanding teams and personalities in the 21 seasons of hockey. One individual who has clearly made a mark is Bob Francis. All five. All right, we're picking it up. That'll work, hard cruiser D's. Bob Francis, a great uh, individual to work with and has a tremendous record over his first two years as head coach for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. The Eagles will take on Kansas City tomorrow night at the Salt Palace, 7 p.m. We'd love to see you, and uh, we hope you're enjoying the broadcast here tonight. The Eagles with a 2 to nothing lead over the goals, and we'll be back in just a moment from the San Diego Sports Arena in San Diego, California. a thought in passing. The longest distance between you and the gas pump is a short line. The geo line of short compact cars from Gus. Another collection agency demanding more money. But we just don't have it. And the bills keep piling up. Immediate relief is available. At the law firm of Rulin T. Burton and Associates, we can file a Chapter 13 within hours to stop lawsuits, garnishments, and foreclosures. Stop creditor phone calls and relieve the pressure today. Call now for a free consultation to learn more. Call 278-0404, 
Ruland T. Burton and Associates, 278-0404. Who says you can count on light and optical? I do. I do. I do. And so does my whole family. Count on light and optical for the best in professional eye care and fast, caring service. Their hours work out great with my schedule. They even make special eyeglasses for computer users like me. You should have seen how many kinds of no-line bifocals they showed me. In a world of change, isn't it nice to have at least one thing to count on? Yeah. This is your ordinary run-of-the-mill cottage cheese. And this is quality checked cottage cheese. Can't tell the difference? Quality checked tastes fresher. How come? Over 22,000 checks and inspections. You can tell if it's been checked, checked, checked on the inside, if this check is on the outside. Look for the check in the queue. It says our dairy foods taste better because we're better than we have to be. Cremo Weber Quality Checked Cottage Cheese. Welcome back, everyone, to the Spokes Arena here in San Diego, California. I'm Mike Burek, alongside Randy Busick. And Randy, the Eagles are leading 2-0. No scoring in the second period, but it was an outstanding goaltender's duel in the middle stanza. Well, that's the main reason, Mike, why the score is so low, is because of the outstanding play by Warren Sharples and Elaine Chevrier. Both have been tested uh, quite a bit tonight, but uh, they've stood their ground and made a lot of great saves. Uh, Warren Sharples faced 13 shots that period, Elaine Chevrier eight. And the Golden Eagles having a couple of scoring chances on Elaine Chevrier, quite a few, in fact, in the second period of play, and Chevrier was outstanding. Well, he's a, a very quick goaltender, Mike. He's uh, got great reflexes, and uh, he really plays his angles well, controls his rebounds, and uh, really uh, eliminates a lot of problems for himself through his speed and quickness. Warren Sharples looks for the shutout. Uh, the Eagles have had three shutouts this season. Sharples has been outstanding, not yielding San Diego any uh, scores here tonight. Well, I'm sure Warren Sharples is uh, just concerned with the win. If, if it's a, a shutout, it's just like uh, extra gravy. Uh, here's a great save by Elaine uh, Chevrier on Paul Cruz walking down, trying to go in between his legs, just barely misses, uh, unable to control his rebound, uh, but has the composure to fight back, gain the puck, throw it back out in front uh, to Todd Harkins, and Chevrier just uh, made a great save there uh, and controlled the rebound to uh, stop the play dead. Harkins, a rookie for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles out of Miami of Ohio, and Chevrier also played for that school. And Warren Sharples was equal to the task, as we mentioned, uh, not yielding a scoring play here tonight. Well, War Warren Sharples has a very stand-up style, Mike. He comes out, plays his angles well, and he's a very tall uh, goaltender as far as goaltenders go. He covers a lot of the net. Uh, Duguay comes out around the corner there, stands up, makes a save. Uh, as the puck comes back out uh, to Young, he has a great shot, and uh, uh, Sharples showed great concentration there. Uh, there was a little bit of traffic in front of him uh, to go down and stop the puck and then control his rebound and, and, uh, and stop the play there dead. Well, the Eagles hold on to the 2 0 lead. Great goaltending here tonight. We should have a great third period here from San Diego, and we'll have the play by play in just a moment. Go west off I 15 on 33rd South or 700 West for once in a lifetime savings on the largest selection of custom vans and GMC trucks west of the Mississippi. Salt Lake Valley GMC is still under construction, but our giant inventory is already here, and we're passing the high-volume savings on to you now. Choose from over 300 custom vans, 100 new GMC trucks, and 100 used vehicles. We're not far from wherever you are. Get off I-15 on 33rd South and head west to 700 West and Salt Lake Valley GMC now. A wonderful warm coat to keep the winter chill away can be yours now at savings of 20 to 50% at ZCMI Cameo Room Furs. Take 24 months to pay interest-free. Free monogramming and alterations. Step out in maximum warmth and style. Choose from strollers, coats, and jackets from the largest collection in the West. Every surprise gift is subject to exchange of choice or full refund. 20 to 50% savings now at ZCMI Cameo Room Furs. Taste. We're back to action here in San Diego, just underway in the third period. The Eagles holding to a 2-0 lead as the goals to play the puck on the right side. So the Eagles trying to win their 31st game of the year. On the left wing side, Chernomaz breezing into the goal zone, but taken off the puck at the last moment by Rob McKinnis on the right side. Ahead for Darren Lowe, able to push the puck to center, crosses the red line into the Salt Lake to territory. In against the Clark, shooting one. Sharp will squeezes the pads together, but back of the play, it looks like we're gonna have a slashing penalty. Just 55 seconds gone. 
into this third period, and it appears that San Diego will have their sixth opportunity with the man advantage here tonight. Kerry Clark's going to get whistled down for a slashing penalty there, Mike. Uh, Darren Lowe had a good head of steam up as he came through uh, center ice area, cut across a blue line. Kerry Clark was standing still at the top of the circles in the Eagles' end, and as uh, Darren Lowe came flying around the far side, Kerry Clark tried to do anything to, to break his concentration momentum, took a swing at him, uh, but David Cassidy uh, thought it was uh, too hard of a swing, and he's going to whistle him down. Clark uh, didn't have good position on him. Lowe was going far around the outside, and uh, Clark hacked him, and he, he got uh, caught on it, and he's going to sit for two minutes. Clark for slashing. Time of the penalty, 55 seconds. The goal's 0 for 5 in the power play here tonight at the Sports Arena. Eagles trying to work it free, but they rule it was dropped unfairly. We'll do it over again in the Salt Lake Zone. Eagles to kill it off at Bureau and Sweeney. Grant and Melrose on defense. We heard Rich Chernamaz talk at the break uh, uh, saying that uh, the team really has to start controlling their aggressions uh, and get stay out of the penalty box. So uh, penalties could be a big factor in this game tonight, Mike, if they continue to uh, let the goals go on the man advantage. Charlie Simmer behind the net for Ron Duguay. Darcy Norton is the other forward as uh, Duguay comes up with a puck. Being hacked by Salt Lake's Kevin Grant, and the puck is loose to the left of the Golden Eagles net. Here's Duguay trying to work it free, but Grant between the circles on the wing for Sweeney. Short-handed chance. Sweeney moving in, whirls back at center, and then just beautifully tips it for Kevin Melrose. He waits, turns, and then smacks it off the boards into center. Puck is loose into the San Diego zone, and the goals have to go back. Well, a great play there uh, by uh, Kevin Melrose uh, to really kill some uh, time on the clock here and uh, send uh, the goals back in their own zone. Eagles uh, shorthanded for another 118, 18-20 left in this third period. And Solik holding to a 2-0 advantage. Here's McKinnis on left wing. Shoots it off to the backboards behind the net. Eagles Melrose plays it all the way down into the goals territory. And again, San Diego have to go back. Here's McKinnis on the left wing side. His brother Al was a Conn Smythe Trophy winner for the Calgary Flames a couple of years ago. In the playoffs for MVP, here's a shot by Norton, steered aside by Sharples, and the puck is loose to the side of the goal. San Diego on the power play, at centered, but Samard able to break out of there for Salt Lake. The lead pass for Chernamaz a little bit behind him, and the Eagles captain just beautifully leaves it for Osiki, and he slams it down into the goal zone. Well, we've seen this all night uh, long, Mike. Uh, the Eagles have been superb so far in their uh, uh, penalty killing, and uh, the goals have uh, really fizzled out. Here is the puck loose on the left wing side. It's a chance for San Diego's Darren Lowe being watched by Bureau to the side of the net for Martins, but Sharples able to pounce on top and hold on with 2.37 gone into the third period at 2 nothing Salt Lake lead. You know, the fans have not had a chance to see Sharples a lot this year. In fact, he's played only nine of his 23 games this year at the Salt Palace, only three pro wins at home, so it's kind of nice for the fans to have a chance to see Warren Sharples uh, back in Salt Lake. Of course, fans listening to the broadcast on the Golden Eagles radio network, but Sharples uh, has not seen a lot of action at home, mostly on the road. Well, he's done an excellent job, too. It's really, uh, in some senses, uh, tough to play on the road. Uh, but then again, uh, if you look at it on the other hand, there's a little bit of added pressure to perform in your own building in front of your own crowd. So uh, Bobby Francis is trying to help him out. He's a young player, his first year. Uh, as, as best he can, and uh, he thinks that's the best way to ease him in. Mark Bureau to draw up against Sullivan. Bureau is outstanding on the faceoffs, and Bureau able to win the draw back for Kevin Melrose. Another Eagles rookie. The net has been dislodged as the goals try and work it free, and we're going to have another penalty here with 2.42 gone into the, the third period at 2 0 Salt Lake lead. I think this one will go against San Diego. Uh, Steve Martinson uh, got whistled down there on a hooking call. Uh, Mark Bureau uh, uh, controlled the puck off the faceoff, got it uh, directly back uh, to uh, Rick Lassard, who gained the net area and was going to uh, just turn around and uh, clear it down the ice to send the goals back again. But Martinson got a stick on him, hooked him down, and pulled him into the net, uh, uh, dislodging it. But uh, David Casty, the referee, was standing right there. Uh, to call the penalty as uh, Rick Lassard skates around the net. Martinson's got a stick on him and hauls him right down there, pulling the net off its moorings. So the Eagles will have a power play for a minute 47. Martinson in the box for hooking at 242. So the team's at even strength right now. Eagles looking for win number 31. They're looking for points 65 and 66 and looking for win number 14 on the road. 
four on four at this point with Bureau and Sweeney. Lessard and McCready on defense. McCready in his first season with the Golden Eagles. Bureau to draw for so late. The goals win the draw back on the left wing side and Al Tours swivels in against the defense. Cuts in on a two-man break, shoots high over top of the net. Good scoring chance for San Diego. Then Melrose the rides the player off the puck to the side of the goal, Sullivan. And now it's a power play for Salt Lake as the Eagles player, Clark, out of the penalty box. Now it's center ice here as the Sweeney cutting in with the Samard. Drops it to for Sweeney at the top of the circle. Right side pass for McCready. His shot. Chevrier gets a piece and cleared by San Diego deep into the Salt Lake zone. Oh, well, uh you see there, Mike, uh, you don't really need a hard shot on the goal. It just has to be put in the goaltender's uh, uh, crease. And with a little bit of traffic, there's a lot of problems there, and he's really forced to make it a lot tougher. Here's save. Bureau cutting it on net. Tries to steer it free, but Chevrier the save. And then the net is dislodged again in the San Diego goal crease area as Bureau uh, able to work in on the power play into the goal zone. The Eagles and the goals. It is 2-0 Salt so Lake here in San Diego, and we'll come back in just a moment. Hey, Salt Lake City, you need hard water zest. It's hard to get clean in hard water. And you're in a hard water town. Clean with hard water zest, and you'll know what we mean. You're not fully clean unless you're zest fully clean. Hard water zest was made for hard water. Soap leaves a film behind, but zest rinses clean. No film on your skin. No ring in your toe. You're not fully clean unless you're zest fully clean. We're at the San Diego Sports Arena live here tonight. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the San Diego Goals, a 2-0 lead. And an unusual number of times tonight, Randy, the net has been dislodged. Of course, with the Meg Nets, it's very easily for the net post to become dislodged. Well, uh, you know, the fans might think, well, why don't they uh, put big poles in the ice uh, so that the net doesn't pop off as easily as, as it has uh, tonight? They, of course, uh, had that in the past, but it... Uh, caused a lot of problems and a dangerous situation for the players when they did come crashing into the net. It, it had absolutely no give, but uh, with the invention of these little magnets, and the net comes off and it really has saved a lot of injuries. Unfortunately, sometimes, uh, such as the game tonight, the net has uh, been dislodged quite often. Warren Sharples so looks for his second professional shutout. Uh, the Eagles as a team have had three this year, and they still have quite a bit of time to kill off here. 16 and a half minutes left. The only goals in the first period, Mark Bureau is the 35th of the year. C.J. Young, his 21st. Bureau, by the way, only eight shy of his career high. He had 43 last year for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Face off in the San Diego zone. Eagles with Chernomez trying to drop it free, but the goals of Duguay breaks free to center. On the right side for the forward, the Morton score. The goal scorer, a shorthanded goal to cut the lead. Well, that was a great uh, passing play by Ron Duguay. He used a lot of his smarts there, uh, picked up the puck, broke out of his own zone, just made a little chip pass up to Darcy Morton. Marco Siki had him covered, but he wasn't sure where the puck was because his back was to the play there. Norton got ahead a step on him. Duguay just chips it up ahead to Morton. Norton uh, has a step on Osiki, gets around him. Osiki's trying to hook him down a little bit and uh, prevent him from getting a chance. But Norton kept his uh, uh, strong uh, stance there, uh, stepped around him and slid it right uh, just to the uh, far side of Sharples, just inside the goal post. Ron Duguay, an assist on that goal. It's the only assist. Norton is 12th of the year, his second shorthanded goal. 3.38 the time of the tally, and the goals have broken the shutout and have cut the lead. Norton did a little dance to celebrate as well. He spent the last two years in the Minnesota organization with the Kalamazoo Wings. And the Eagles now have to hold on with 16-10 left in this game. They do have the power play, however, for another 50 seconds. It's cleared right back into the goal zone. Chevrier plays it on his backhand. So Lakes the Bureau trying to drop it free for Lessard. Left point, shoots and caught by Chevrier. He holds on as the Lessard let it fly from the left point. Uh, great save by Chevrolet, but he had a clear look at that shot, Mike. The puck went back to the point. Lassard let it go. There was no traffic in front of Chevrolet, so uh, it was quite an easy glove save for him. Uh, he wisely uh, chose to uh, hold on to it, uh, get the whistle, hopefully win the face off and get the puck down the ice to uh, get the pressure off of him during this uh, Eagles power play. Eagles uh, have the lead at 2-1. to one. 
Now two are talking things over with uh, Larry Roberts, the trainer for San Diego, Dave Cassidy, the referee, who, as mentioned earlier, works also as a linesman in this league. The faceoff in the San Diego zone, Salt Lake goals by Bureau and C.J. Young in the first period. Darcy Norton has kept the lead here in period three. And Randy, is there any difference in strategy when you're up two to nothing versus two to one? Do you try and hold back a little bit more defensively or, or no with the 15.57 left? Well, there's so much time left on the uh, clock, Mike. Uh, you can't uh, really afford to lay back uh, because when you do that, you're only creating a headache and a lot of problems for yourself because you're allowing the other team to skate into your zone uh, unmolested. And usually they're the ones that are gonna have the good scoring chances. You have to keep up with the same way that uh, you built that lead on. Eagles have Bureau, Sweeney, and Samard. Uh, another 40 seconds to work in the power play, and Lassard takes over left wing point. Able to spin it for Scott McCready. Hands it free on the right wing side. Samard trying to jam it to, into the corner. And the goals tour back of the net, being hounded by Sweeney. Also there is the defenseman Coral for San Diego, and Sweeney whirling around. Back to the point, Lassard. Hands it free for Bureau, one-time shot. And I believe Chevrolet got a piece of it, and it ricochets all the way deep into the Salt Lake zone. A one-time shot by Mark Bureau. Very hard for a goalie uh, to stop because uh, it happens so fast. He's just sliding across the crease, trying to get over to the other side, and the puck starts flying at him. Very hard, hard thing to st stop. Here is Floyd after that it on the penalty so the player out of the penalty box Martin the goals not only kill off the penalty but score a shorthanded goal as Lassard back after icing is the call and he does a little swan dive into the corner to the right of Warren Sharples if the goals cut the lead two to one Rick Lassard three goals on the season uh, but a key goal in the game last night against the goals, the fourth goal to give Salt Lake a 4-2 lead. Well, uh, last night uh, was a great win for the Eagles, uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, they're uh, right in the middle of a fire tonight, a 2-1 uh, game right now. Uh, the, the goals seem to have a little bit of momentum going. Uh, the Eagles are going to have to take it away from them. The next goal is so, so important. Faceoff will be at center. The Eagles having Todd Harkins to drop against Ron Duguay, Cruz, and Deasley are the wingers. They've added an assist on that scoring play. Dean Morton add, added uh, to the score sheet, so it should read Darcy Norton, his 12th of the year from Duguay and Dean Morton, 338, a shorthanded goal. Nevertheless, the Eagles will try and uh, score the next one. They're up two to one. Here's Duguay, cuts in on left wing, a chance for Norton in on goal. Circles back of the Salt Lake goal and centers, but blocked off by Kevin Melrose on the left wing side. Melrose ahead for Cruz as he's able to play it off the boards to center and McKinnis for the goals. Plays it but stolen on left wing. Deasley in on goal. His shot off the stick of the, the defenseman Morton and into the corner. So Lakes Deasley hustles in, but Duguay plays to the right of the goal. The former New York Ranger, Duguay able to play at the center. It bounces on edge and finally it's flat as uh, Osiki able to cue it to center. Deasley now into the goal zone with Cruz. Deasley shoots and Chevrolet to save rebound. And he shoots it right through the goal crease, but the goal is able to play at the center. Good scoring chance for Salt Lake as Lassard able to play it off the glass into the goal zone. The Eagles change up offensively. C.J. Young, Corey Lyons up front for Salt Lake with Chernomaz in across the line. A chance for Martinson, but he can't pull the trigger. It rolls off his stick and Salt Lake's Young plays on the left wing side. Six minutes gone into the third period. The Eagles holding to a two to one lead and the goal is to knock it in offside at the defense. The Eagles up two to one here in San Diego at the Sports Arena. Hope you're enjoying the action and we'll be right back in just a moment. The times I can't forget The hero who's my friend I know that it's Here we are in San Diego, the Eagles holding to a two to one lead. The Eagles have scored the only goal here in this third period and Salt Lake on the attack. Here's C.J. Young, played in the Goodwill games this summer in Seattle, Washington. Young trying to maneuver free in for Chertemaz. Grant covers up, shoots, and Chevrolet gets a piece, big rebound, but it skitters right to Duguay. And here comes the flashy San Diego forward. Duguay in on goal, shoots, and that's blocked by Lassard. Duguay can still skate with the best. 
Here's the low, and Grant to collide, and Grant comes up for the puck and charges it up on the right side and dumped to center. Boy, Duguay can really skate as Duguay flips it right back to center. Eagles Young tripped up, and finally on left wing tour, hands it right to Rich Turnamaz, who leaves it for Grant, and he just it plays it to the San Diego blue line. Here is the goals player on the right side. Floyd cutting in, in on goal, and Nichols, and he shot it wide. It was Nichols who was working into the Salt Lake zone. Here is Grant now, plays it to the blue line and all the way deep into the San Diego zone. It will not be icing because they rule San Diego could have played the puck. 12.38 left third period, the Eagles holding to a 2-1 to one lead and a good to possible scoring chance for San Diego. As the goals play it right back on the right side tour, able to play at the center. Goals on the attack, it's slammed in by the forward, Sullivan, but it's deflected away by Olsen, who plays it deep into the San Diego zone. Al Tour back after it as he touches it. Icing is the call here in the third period. The Salt Lake holding to a 2-1 to one lead. Again, Icing uh, called because the Golden Eagles shot it from their own side of center, and it crossed the San Diego goal line and touched by a goals player. Well, uh, uh, that's an icing, panel, uh, icing call. That'll bring the puck all the way back into the Eagle zone, and the faceoff will be, just be to the left of Warren Sharples. It seems to me right now, Mike, that uh, the Eagles are uh, uh, perhaps maybe sitting back a little bit, and the Gulls are uh, creating a lot of chances for themselves, and uh, Warren Sharples is being tested a lot more uh, in this third period than he has been throughout the, the first two periods of this game. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, the Eagles and Kansas City. Military Dependence Night, uh, if you're a dependent uh, of someone at the, in the Persian Gulf, or if you're in the military, come on down to the Salt Palace tomorrow night. To, uh, it's a freebie, the Eagles and Kansas City. Here is uh, Robbie Nichols trying to hold on to the side of the goal in front of the net. Now to the left of the goal, McKinnis shoots it off the side of the net. It tingled, and the fans thought it had gone through, but it did not. And the Eagles Bureau able to break to center. Chris crosses with Samard, the drop pass for Olsen. In on goal for Swinney, shoots, and the save made by Chevrier. Great uh, scoring chance for Salt Lake. Now Sweeney able to play it for Samard. Back to the point. Olsen shoots. Kick save. Chevrier. And then McKinnis and Sweeney collide on the left wing side. Goals try and flip it free, but Salt Lake in a forecheck. Samard back of the net knocked off the puck and the goals control. 11 and a half minutes left. Third period. The Eagles with a slim 2-1 to one lead. In a heck of a hockey game here from San Diego. Hero sets it up for Deasley on the right side, and then Cruz covers up into the San Diego zone. Eludes McKinnis in on net, but he's tied up beautifully by the defenseman Dean Morton. Eagles control, Harkins a shot. That deflects wide, and it actually ricochets off the backboards all the way to center. Eagles Melrose being hounded by the forward Norton, and then Salt Lake on the attack. Here is Harkins moving in to the goal zone. Drops it in front, but Duguay steals for San Diego and leads out of there with the Eagles holding to a 2-1 to one lead. Duguay's pass off the mark, and Deasley flies into the goal zone. Here is the rookie Harkins uh, after it chops it right back behind the goal, and the goals have to go back. This has been a long shift for the Golden Eagles threesome as it's uh, worked in on left wing for Harkins offside with 10.36 left in the third period. And Randy, how long are the shifts uh, for a uh, team? And we'll uh, talk about that in just a moment. It's 2-1 Eagles here in the third period, live from San Diego. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Enjoy an evening at Partners, Ogden or Holiday. Famous for truly unique atmosphere and really good food. Partners specialize in fresh seafood and tender aged beef, featuring our own homemade recipes. We serve dollar-saving early bird specials 5 to 6.30 p.m. every Monday through Thursday. Choose from six of our most popular entrees. Complete dinners at lunchtime prices. Enjoy the best for less at Partners, 337 31st Street in Ogden and 4668 South Holiday Boulevard, Holiday. Eagles leading 2-1, to 10.36 left in the third period. We'll talk about the line changes and how that operates uh, in a hockey game. But the Eagles right now holding to a slim 2-1 to one lead with only 10.36 left. And the goals to chip it free back of the Salt Lake goal. San Diego's uh, forward Martinson after it uh, cleared to the blue line. Coral flings it to the side of the goal. Floyd centers for low. He scores! Well, that was a great passing play, but the whole uh, play evolved 
uh, through the great anticipation of uh, Dave Coral. Uh, he uh, thought that he could jump down into the zone and prevent the Eagles from breaking out, which he did uh, very successfully, kept the puck down low, and uh, that, that's how this whole uh, scoring play happened. Uh, the puck came out in front to Lowe, who was out by himself. Uh, Here's the, the puck's down low to Floyd, out in front to Lowe, who's nowhere, ne nobody near him, and he just shovels it past Warren Sharples. But previously, before that, Floyd was able to get the puck because of the great play by Dave Coral. Darren Lowe, a veteran player, played briefly in the NHL with the Pittsburgh Penguins, scores the goal as 18th of the year. Larry Floyd on the assist, and they've also given an assist to Dave Coral. The game is tied at two, and it was a pretty good setup for low in front. Well, it was a great play uh, all around by uh, all three players. Uh, the Eagles uh, thought that they perhaps were going to get the puck out. A couple of players left the zone maybe a little bit prematurely, leaving them shorthanded in their own zone. And when the puck came back, uh, Darren Long was left in front of the net all alone. Olsen along, shots steered aside by Chevrier. Not much of a chance for Sharples with the forward low all alone in front. Now a chance for San Diego's Floyd into the neutral zone, and he just punches it right back of the goal. So the Gulls have tied the game. The Eagles uh, coming into this period leading 2 to nothing, but it's a 2-2 standoff as the Eagles on the attack. Here is the Chernomaz in for a streaking player in front. Clark backhands it wide. Then Clark rumbles after a San Diego player. We're going to have a penalty back of the play as some more pushing along the boards with 9.40 left. Here in this third period, a 2-2 standoff. Well, the way it looked, uh, I think David Cassie is going to call coincidental penalties uh, uh, against Young for the Gulls and uh, Rich Chernomaz for the Golden Eagles. Uh, Young took Chernomaz into the boards rather hard, and Chernomaz uh, retaliated by uh, uh, swatting away at him. But uh, Dave uh, Cassidy was right there, saw the whole incident, and uh, he, he's going to even things up here, Mike. Well, the teams will still be at even strength, just the minor penalties here with 10-20 gone into the third period. The Eagles and the goals tied at two. Young for San Diego, a roughing minor. Chernomaz Salt Lake holding penalty, and again, the penalties at 10-20 here in this third period. The Eagles the goals tonight, Mark Bureau and C.J. Young. San Diego scoring twice here in this third period. Darcy Norton, his 12th, and Darren Lowe, his 18th at 9.36. There's Chernomass right there. He's taking the hit from Young. Uh, Young got his hands up high on him, but just after that, uh, Chernomass uh, held uh, Young and didn't let him get back into the play, and that's why Rich Chernomass uh, got a penalty on that play. Here is Rick Lassard, right wing side uh, for the Golden Eagles. Marco Sikiu shovels it right back into the San Diego corner to the right of the net. Eagles in a four check. Puck uh, squirts free. It uh, bounces in front, and Chevrier able to pounce on top and hold on. Interesting about Elaine Chevrier, the Detroit Red Wings have a slew of goaltenders. Glenn Hanlon in Detroit this year. Dave Gagnon, a million dollar signee, a free agent signee. Tim Chevelday, they have a guy by the name of Scott King, so they're loaded in goal. That's why Chevrolet is in net for San Diego. Well, uh, it's like that everywhere, Mike. Uh, there are so many teams with so many great goaltenders, and there's only really four positions available, and they have to find places for these players to play. And that's why you see a man of uh, Lane Chevrolet's caliber down in this league, but it really does help the league out to see uh, a seasoned veteran like him come in and play. Chevrolet beat the Eagles uh, January 11th by a score of 7-3, so the Eagles trying to get back for that uh, loss. A little revenge from the 7-3 setback January 11th. This game has really turned into a very exciting one, Randy, with the goal scoring twice and not uh, so exciting for Coach Bob Francis, however. Well, no surprise that the game's so close because uh, I think uh, there's been, uh, I think maybe uh, eight out of the 11 have been a, a, a one or two gold uh, defeat, so it's always been a close game between these two teams. Golden Eagles looking for win number 31. They're looking to move 13 points ahead of uh, San Diego in the division standings. Here are the Eagles trying to work it free, but uh, back of the goal, San Diego's tour plays. Back of the net, Samard into forecheck, a fight for it ferociously into the far side, and finally Nichols picks an opening and spins it right back into the Eagles zone. It might be an icing. Lassard back after icing is the call, but only because Lassard won the battle back there and the faceoff will come all the way back. 
You know, Mike, another thing uh, I would just want to talk about is uh, the penalties. Uh, with only nine minutes to go on the game, the score tied 2-2. Uh, both teams are going to be very cautious now. They're not going to play with such reckless abandon because they don't want to jeopardize uh, their team's situation by putting them in a short-handed uh, uh, situation, uh, especially coming this close to the end of the game and the score being so close. Eight of the ten games this year between the two teams have been decided by two or fewer goals. Five by one goal, two by two, and here it's a one-goal game because it's a 2-2 tie with 9.08 left. Well, uh, and uh, surprisingly enough, uh, the goals are playing so great, and this is their sixth game in nine days. They've got to be tired, you would think, anyways. Here are the Eagles uh, on the attack, uh, back of the goal tour for San Diego. Plays it for Bannister to the left of the goal. It's flipped all the way to center, and San Diego try and wind to center the Bureau, able to whack it for Osiki, and he spins it right back down. 8.51 left in the third period, a 2-2 tie. Robbie Nichols plays for the goals, able to work out of there for San Diego. Nichols first to center. He's able to spin into the Salt Lake Zone. Desired knocks him off the puck. Eagles wind it to the far side, but Tour holds it in. Back of the goal, the puck on edge, and finally Desired flattens it out as he works out of there. Here's Rick Lassard, a former first-team IHL All-Star a couple of years ago on defense in this IHO. For Marco Siki, the rookie, he clears it in. Eagles change up defensively, and Melrose and Grant, the new defensive pair for the Golden Eagles. Just over eight minutes left in this game. We're tied at two. Goals take over on the left wing side. It's chopped right back into the Eagle zone and up into the stands. A stoppage of play with the, just a little bit over eight minutes remaining. 2-2 tie here from the San Diego Sports Arena. The Eagles and the San Diego goals, and we'll have a face-off outside the blue line uh, to the right of Warren Sharples. Well, uh, with only eight minutes left to go in the game, Mike, uh, time is becoming uh, a factor here as to the final outcome of what, what will happen here. Should the game stay tied uh, uh, through this last eight minutes, we'll take a two-minute break, break uh, let the teams get a little bit of a breather and start a five-minute sudden death overtime. Brian Pataffi at the Salt Lake of players bench as we have the 2-2 game. Mike O'Connell, the head coach for the Gulls. He played at the National Hockey League with Boston, Detroit, and the Chicago Blackhawks, a 35-year-old Chicago native. In his first year as head coach, he had an impressive uh, playing career, and he's the son of former Cleveland Browns defensive back Dick O'Connell. He played his college ball at the University of Illinois. Mike O'Connell, uh, an outstanding player, in the National Hockey League, his first year behind the bench for the goal. Eagles and San Diego tied at two. Lead pass on left wing, but it's broken up in the defense. And Grant swivels to get away from Simmer, and he's able to poke it up into the stands. A stop to play with under eight minutes left in this game. A 2-2 tie. We have a couple of finals to report in the International Hockey League. The Milwaukee Admirals defeat the Muskegon Lumberjacks by a score of 7-4. And the Phoenix Roadrunners and the Kansas City Blades. Phoenix win the game by a score of five to two. And the Eagles will take on Kansas City tomorrow night at the Salt Palace. The game time, seven o'clock. Love to see you tomorrow evening. Special Valentine's game, Military Dependence Night. Also February 20th, the Eagles against Muskegon will be family night. The 10 members of your family can get into the game for just 20 bucks. Puck is loose, left wing point. Chance for McKinnis, and it's blocked off. It actually, I believe, went up the shirt of Kevin Melrose, and he's trying to find the puck. Where is it? <laughs> There's something that very We're going to have to undress him to find the puck. Usually, uh, Mike, uh, on the back of a jersey, the players have a tie down, and that's in case they do get into an altercation uh, with another player that uh, when they start fighting, uh, the other player doesn't pull the jersey over his head, so it's, it's tied from the back of their jersey to the back of their pants. Again, February 20th, the Eagles against the Muskegon Lumberjacks family night. Up to 10 members of your family can come to the game for a total of 20 bucks. A great deal. We'd love to see you February 20th. For the fans making some noise here in San Diego, a 2-2 standoff late in this game, and we've had a little bit of everything here tonight. Great goaltending and a lot of drama. Here is Salt Lake's Grant plays it, but not out. At the point, McKinnis, the shot blocked off. The puck bounces on edge, and Cruz plays for the Golden Eagles. Left wing for Melrose into the San Diego zone, but blocked off, and Duguay 
trying to make a play. It bounces to center, and Darcy Norton, who scored the first goal for San Diego, on left wing for the 36-year-old Charlie Simmer. Not flying, but Dugate drops it back to McKinnis, but it's out of his reach and rolls back into the goal zone. Well, of course, that won't be icing because it was the Gulls who shot it down into their own end. Just a miscue. Here, Simmer tries to pass it in front. But Norton can't get a stick on it. Now Cruz plays for Salt Lake with just over seven minutes left in this game. The game is tied at two as Salt Lake clear it right back in. Chevrier to the side of the goal, leaves it for McKinnis, who's able to work out of there for San Diego. Rolls in across the blue line. McKinnis stops, drives it just wide. At the point, Floyd for San Diego. His shot, Sharples gets a piece. And then on the wing, Corey Lyons, the rookie for Salt Lake, out of the Western Hockey League, moves in, cranks up a shot. It's Black Samar to drive up into the stands and a stop for your play. First, Corey Lyons, and then Samard with chances, and both were deflected before they were able to get towards that San Diego goal. A couple of great uh, shots there, uh, Mike, but uh, uh, from quite far out, it deflected up over the glass, and that's why the whistle. The Eagles and the Eagles tied at two. We're here in San Diego. Hope you're enjoying the action, and we'll be right back in just a moment. While every bank has its own personality, their claims are all very similar. They say they're friendly or very knowledgeable, convenient, or offer great service. So how do you decide which one will deliver what they claim? May we suggest you look to the bank whose people allow it to stand a little taller, a little stronger. I did. Well, of course I did. We're back in San Diego. The Eagles and the Gulls tied at two. Just over six minutes left in regulation time as C.J. Young plays the puck for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. The rookie who played his college hockey at Harvard in across the line. Young trying to sweep it through, but Chevrolet is able to pounce on top and hold on as the Eagles' Young crashed into that to end board area with the Dave Quarrel of the San Diego goals and this game going down to the bitter end here at 2-2 time we want to remind everybody that if the game is tied through 60 we would have a sudden death five minute period to decide a winner both teams would receive a point and then it would be for the bonus point well that's when the game really becomes exciting of course whoever scores first the game will be over they'll get two points the other team will get one the benches here in San Diego, a adjacent, 6.07 left, Bob Francis, Jamie Hislop, and Brian Pataffi on the Salt Lake uh, bench, of course, with the Eagle players as well. 6.07 left, the game tied at two. Glad you've joined us here tonight. We've had a very enjoyable evening. The puck is loose back of the San Diego goal. Samar trying to chip it for Bureau. Bureau is unable to gain possession of the puck, and then it's wound right back behind the goal where the goals, Bannister, trying to gain possession. They fight for it ferociously, and then Dugay able to sky it to, into the neutral zone. Under six minutes left in this game, and then it's deflected up to the near side with the game tied at two. Bureau and Young for Salt Lake in the first period. Norton and Lowe here in the third period. Again, tomorrow night, the Eagles against Kansas City at the Salt Palace, 7 p.m. The Blades have the worst record in the IHL, but uh, they play the Eagles pretty tough this year. Well, they're, they're in their division. Uh, it's their first year into the league. Uh, they're experimenting quite a bit. They're looking for the right formula as far, far as who they want to interject in their lineup. But you're right, Mike. They always do have a great game against the Eagles. And, of course, the second televised game, the Eagles and San Diego, will take place February 28th. That game will be played at the Salt Pels, and you won't want to miss that. Here's the puck loose on the right side. Mark Bureau spins it free into the center ice area, and Bureau slams it right back into the goal zone. Caught by the goaltender, Chevry, and he sets it up for Al Tour on the left wing side. Eagles are trying to jam it free. They fight for it ferociously over there. It's flipped in the slot and finally cleared by San Diego, but not out some art after it. And the goaltender, Chevry, is able to pounce on top with 5-12 left in the third period, a 2-2 tie. Well, uh, Elaine Chevrier, uh, Mike, you can see he's got a lot of smarts. He's a very seasoned veteran. He knows exactly when he should hold onto the puck, get a whistle and start over again, and when she should pass it off to his defenseman. He's always aware of where everybody is at all times. Robbie Nichols, a very fierce competitor. He played last year with the Phoenix Roadrunners. And of course, Mark Bureau on both scoring plays, uh, involved with the scoring goal at 640 in the first period, and then set up C.J. Young. Tim Sweeney 
has been playing with uh, Mark Bureau and Martin Samard for the most part. Well, uh, kind of a homecoming for them when Team Sweeney got sent back down from Calgary. Uh, uh, they have just uh, took right off right where they uh, were last season, and uh, it's been a big plus for this Eagles through this winning streak that they've had. San Diego goals, an unaffiliated team. They have players from various NHL teams under contract. Here's Simmer on left wing for San Diego. Able to spin the free into the neutral zone, crosses the red line and dumps it right back into Eagles territory where Cruz plays it into center and a chance for Salt Lake. On the left wing side, Deasley, one man back. He shoots high over top of the net. Deasley let it fly. Here's Cruz for Salt Lake. Trying to muscle it free. It's a work to, on the left wing side of the goals. Break free to center. Two-man break for San Diego. In across the line, McKinnis caught up by the defensive uh, player on the far side, Osiki, and the Eagles come up with the puck, and Cruz able to play it in the center. Four and a half minutes left. Third period, a 2-2 tie. And Larry Floyd able to wind it free on the right side, streaking free. Darcy Norton shoots, pass save, Sharples. And with San Diego changing, no other player there to try and work free for a rebound. As Coral slams it right back behind the Eagles goal, and Salt Lake control the puck. Uh, great play by Warren Sharples, get behind the net and gain control of that puck, or else it would have wrapped right around for Dave Coral. Paul Cruz to trying to work it free. Harkins also, and Todd Harkins for the Golden Eagles with nine goals this year on right wing for Ryan Deasley. In across the line, Deasley stops, holds up to the top of the circle, tries to center one, blocked off by Dave Coral, who's able to try and uh, work it free. And finally, Young plays for San Diego. On the left wing side, Scott Young, no relation to C.J. Young of the Golden Eagles. Here's Melrose into center. Left wing side for C.J. Young, knocked off the puck, and finally Melrose just yanks it right back into the goal's end. Three and a half minutes left, third parade, a 2-2 tie. San Diego scoring both goals here in the final period. Now the goals break two men to center, and across the line is Martinson holding on, trying to center Sullivan. The Sharples gets a pace. And the puck is loose, and finally Chernomaz able to breeze to center. Good scoring chance for San Diego, but Chernomaz zigzags with Young, but Young ahead of the play offside. Only three minutes and 13 seconds left. We're still tied at two. And Chernomaz uh, came across the blue line, but the puck uh, is, is, is right on the blue line. It never really crosses, but C.J. Young, you see on the far side, he crossed before that puck ever did, so that's why it was blown down. 313 left. Goals by Bureau and C.J. Young. Darcy Norton and Darren Lowe for San Diego. A 2-2 standoff. Eagles at home tomorrow night against Kansas City. And we'll play quite a few home games uh, next week, February 20th. 22nd and 23rd, the 20th and 22nd against Muskegon, and then a week from Saturday at home against the same San Diego Goals hockey team. Here's the puck loose back of the goal with just over three minutes left in this game, a 2-2 tie. And the goals break out of there in the center, and San Diego's Sullivan able to work it free. Tries to smack it up on the far wing, and it actually deflects up into the stands. A stoppage of play, we see the far side here in San Diego, of course, the Booster Club. Members in attendance here tonight, some 40 strong. Well, you know, Mike, uh, uh, here, here's a great uh, play. Uh, the goals came down on a three on two, back to Sullivan. Sullivan just ripped one. C.J. Young was there to corral the rebound and uh, worked out at the end, but uh, Warren Sharples again stood his ground, uh, stood up. He didn't really give uh, Sullivan anything to shoot at. Eagles and the goals are tied at two. Eagles have played only four overtime games this year and have not picked up a victory. Two of those games have actually been a shootout. We'll get into that in just a moment as it's cleared right back to center and Sweeney has to hustle back for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Plays up the middle for Mark Bureau. Angles in with Olsen into the San Diego zone. Olsen cuts in, great pass in front for Sweeney. Chevrier gets the pace. Tremendous setup uh, for Sweeney and Chevrier, outstanding save. Goals clear it down the ice, Lassard after it, but the save of the night here for the San Diego goaltender. A 2-2 tie here in San Diego, and we'll be back in just a moment for the exciting finish. What's that cool going down? Is that you rushing through it? What's that? That takes your breath away.
22 left, third period, a 2-2 standoff. Uh, the faceoff will be deep into the San Diego zone, but a tremendous save by Chevrier. As we pick it up, uh, Mark Bureau dumps it to Daryl Olson. Daryl Olson out of the corner of his eye sees Tim Sweeney breaking towards the net, feathers the pass over to him, but Chevrier was right there to keep the score deadlocked at two, Mike. And what great action we've seen so far tonight. Eagles in one goal games this year have a mark of 6 4 and 4. They've played pretty good when it uh, gets down to crunch time. First, we'll go to a shootout if the game was tied after a five-minute sudden-death overtime. But puck is loose on the right side. Duguay plays for San Diego. Wings to center, and then it's chopped right back into the Salt Lake zone. Some, uh, the forward Simmer able to backhand it behind the net with just over two minutes left. We're tied at two. And the Eagles cruise, able to work to center. Simmer knocks him off the puck. Deasley after it also. Scissored at the blue line and then works in. He shoots Chevrier the save and the bouncing rebound controlled by San Diego. And the goals play it into the Salt Lake zone. A chance for San Diego in front of the goal. McKinnis the shot blocked off by Melrose. Now play into the side of the Salt Lake goal. Cruz able to bounce it off the backboards and leads out of there with a minute 40 left in this game. Cruz hit hard by McKinnis and in across the line is the forward Floyd. Angles up, surveys the traffic, then drives it. And a blocker save sharp, pulls it to flex into the corner, and Harkins has no other choice but to ice the puck because the Eagles were in a defensive situation. Back after Coral and icing is called with a minute 21 left. Harkins didn't want to try the breakout pass. He felt at this point better to clear the zone and get reorganized in the defensive territory. Well, part of the reason uh, of that is, Mike, uh, uh, this is a sport unlike others. Uh, they don't have the luxury of having a whole bunch of timeouts when people get tired. They either need uh, a whistle or to be able to change on the fly. Uh, the puck was deep in the uh, Eagles end. They felt there was a little bit of pressure. They were tired. They wanted to get a change, so uh, Harkins threw it down the ice, got the whistle, was able to make the change. We got a fresh line out here now, and they're going to start again. Key face off for Mark Euro. Does he want to win it back or win it to the side? He's going to try and definitely uh, win it back so Rick Lassard has some time to, to get around the net and make a breakout. Eagles uh, Bureau unable to win the draw. It's a backhand uh, on the right side for Floyd, but the Eagles says break out of there in the center. Bureau left wing for Chernomaz, trying to drop it free, but Coral after the whole play whistled on offside with just over a minute left now. 109 to be exact. A 2 2 tie is Chernomaz, Martinson, Samard, Coral. They're all having some words, but with just over a minute left, I don't think you'll see much more than idle discussion. Well, both teams are very cautious. They don't want to step over the line and put their uh, team in a shorthanded situation there. Martinson was uh, with Chernomaz, who uh, really, uh, Rich Chernomaz gives up a lot of height and weight to him, and you can see the bigger players from Salt Lake coming in to protect their captain. Mark Bureau, who is, as mentioned earlier, involved in both scoring plays for Salt Lake. If the game is tied, and as we mentioned, a five-minute sudden-death overtime, if they're still tied, they have a sudden-death shootout where they actually have penalty shots to decide the outcome. Yeah, that's the one thing about hockey uh, at this level, Mike. Uh, nobody leaves a building until there's a winner. They saw uh, in the neutral zone, just outside the blue line, a 2-2 tie. Eagles looking for win number 31, and with a victory, will maintain their seven-point lead over Phoenix with the Roadrunners defeating Kansas City tonight. Here is the defenseman for San Diego, Bannister, able to work against Sweeney and then able to toss it up the left wing side. Here is the forward Sullivan trying to jam it free. The third plays to center. Nichols for San Diego, pokes it in. Under a minute to go in the game, a 2-2 tie. And the Sard able to rim it on the boards on left wing and Bureau plays for the Golden Eagles. Shovels for Samard into center. Here's Nichols on right wing, coming able to control the pass and Bureau just flings it right back in. 40 seconds left in the third period. Here's Bureau unable to control it and finally it squirts to center where Grant on the backhand plays it right back in as the defenseman Bannister hustles back for San Diego. 30 seconds left in regulation time, a 2-2 tie. Here's Lassard on left wing, able to poke it right back to the blue line. Sullivan steals, but covering up is Lassard at his own defense. Right side, Samard, blocked off by Tour. Samard trying to leave it for Chernomaz, who just bangs it right back in. 13 seconds left in regulation time. We may be headed for overtime. Here is the pass ahead to center. Nichols for Duguay, four seconds left. Duguay poke checked, and that's gonna do it. The buzzer sounds signaling the end 
of the third period. Randy Music, we're going to overtime, a 2-2 tie through a total of 60 minutes as we have pushing and shoving in the San Diego zone. Well, a uh, little bit of frustration is going there. Uh, Paul Cruz, who, who is a very physical player for the Golden Eagles, just mucking it up a little bit. I don't think anything really is gonna come out of this. And we will go to an overtime. Randy Busick will come back with the overtime from San Diego, a 2-2 tie. We'll be back in just a moment. With Hardy's Family Value Menu, Mom and Dad can feed themselves and their four kids for under $10. Dad can feed himself and his son's basketball team for under $10. Mom can feed herself for three kids, a neighbor's kid, and a kid she doesn't even know for under $10. Hardy's Family Value Menu is designed for families who want a lot of delicious food for not a lot of money. Like hamburgers for 59 cents, cheeseburgers for 69 cents, and hot dogs for 79 cents. Hardy's Family Value Menu, the return of good old family values. Hey, you gonna eat that last Friday? Kiesel Sales would like to help you with your gift-giving ideas. Choose from our large selection of Zenith televisions, video recorders, and camcorders. Kiesel Sales also has the finest selection of home appliances, featuring Maytag, Amana, Hotpoint, and Gen Air. Kiesel Sales can help make your purchase easier with 90-day interest-free financing, layaway, and free next-day delivery. Kiesel Sales, 3109 Washington Boulevard, Ogden. We are in San Diego, California. The Eagles and the San Diego Gulls. The Eagles have not won a game this year in overtime. They are 0-4, 0-2 in overtime games and 0-2 in shootouts. So they're looking for their first overtime win of the year. Well, uh, they played very well uh, throughout this whole game. I thought uh, uh, they looked a little bit tired towards the end. Uh, uh, probably partially due to the fact that they had to kill a lot of penalties throughout this game. Uh, San, uh, San Diego, of course, uh, due to their schedule, is showing a little bit of fatigue too. But nonetheless, uh, both teams have really put their heart and soul into this game. As sadly enough, someone is going to have to lose this game. But uh, both teams have played well up until this point. San Diego, in a combined overtime and shootout record, three and five, they picked up one victory in a shootout. The game uh, here, of course, is tied to the tune of two. Eagles last overtime or shootout game, January 25th. They lost 5-4 in a shootout in Kalamazoo. But this is always thrilling, Randy, because uh, uh, when the goal is scored, that's it. We're going to go down to ice level with uh, Mike Rungi here at the San Diego Sports Arena. Well, after 60 minutes of play, here I am. I'm supposed to be doing my post-game interview. And what happened? We got to go back for more hockey. Yeah, it's overtime here in San Diego, the San Diego Sports Arena. We're having a good time in San Diego. Wish you were here with us. Get back to the action. Mike Barrick, take it. Boy, it's a fun, Randy. The game is tied at two. The Eagles holding to a 2 nothing lead. The goal's coming back to make it interesting with two third period tallies, and that's why we are tied through 60. Not a very big crowd here tonight, Mike, but they are very uh, boisterous. Uh, they've got their uh, team going. Uh, uh, the Gulls uh, came back from the deficit, uh, seem to have a little bit of momentum going for them, uh, but the Eagles have had a lot of great scoring chances. If not for Elaine Chevrier, they could very well have won this game in regulation. Well, the Eagles looking for their first First overtime or shootout win of the year as the goals break it free on the left wing side. A chance for Floyd. His shot to Sharples gets a piece of that. And Chernomaz plays for the Golden Eagles. Rims it to the right of the net where Grant plays on the right side for Kerry Clark. In the center ice, Clark rumbles to center. He is uh, tied up and the puck is uh, cleared on the right wing side and a stoppage of play. Shots on goal, third period, 10 9 in favor of Salt Lake. The shots on goal through 60 minutes, 32 for San Diego and 26 for Salt Lake. So Warren Sharples, 30 saves in regulation time. So an outstanding job at the Salt Lake Netminder, although it's tied at two. Well, he's got to be happy with his performance, uh, the way he's played tonight. Uh, it's uh, been uh, since last Friday since he's been able to get a game in, uh, but he really has played superb uh, uh, in the last five starts that he's gotten. Eagles uh, have Mark Bureau flanked by Tim Sweeney and Martin Samar. Bureau, two points in the night. And the goals uh, have the line with Sullivan up front for San Diego. Sullivan's the key on the San Diego line to play a defensive role against Mark Bureau. Here's Olsen in the center. Shoots it right back into the goals uh, territory. Robbie Nichols and Rod Dome and the other forward, so a checking line for the goals. Here's Coral tries to flick it free. Bureau after it. Right wing point for Osiki. Cuts in. 
tries to center one, but Coral breaks it up on the left wing side with just over four minutes left in the overtime. A 2-2 tie. Robbie Nichols on the right side trying to feed it uh, for Dahlman, but Salt Lake on the attack into center. Osiki swivels into the San Diego zone, pops it off the backboards, and controlling the puck for San Diego is Dave Coral, the defenseman on the right side for the former Phoenix Roadrunner, Robbie Nichols. Cheats it free into the Salt Lake territory. The rookie Sullivan hit by Rick Lessard and the whole play is whistled down on the near wing with the 342 left in the overtime and the San Diego player shaken up to the near wing. Well, uh, appears to be Sullivan. Rick Lessard, who is a big burly player for the Golden Eagles, he, he comes in and, and he tips the scale at, at quite a weight. And when he takes a player into the boards, uh, the player really feels that Sullivan is obviously hurt. Uh, we're not sure where, but uh, the trainer's out looking at him now. Eagles and the Eagles tied at two here at the Sports Arena in San Diego. We'll be back for a continuation of the overtime in just a moment. Can you tell which of these fireplaces have wood fires and which have natural gas fireplace logs? It isn't easy, because today's natural gas logs look so real, most people can't tell the difference. Natural gas logs turn on and off instantly, don't pollute, come in lots of styles and sizes, last for years, and cost about half as much to use. So which of these fireplaces have the natural gas logs? They all do. Call this toll-free number today and get the natural gas advantage. The faceoff will be deep into the Salt Lake zone. 342 left in the overtime as Sullivan getting up slowly, attended to by the trainer Larry Roberts as Bob Francis and Jamie Hislop survey the situation. Check out their line combinations, but Sullivan was really hit by Rick Lassard and is uh, limping towards the San Diego dressing room. Well, that little, that little the limp there, Mike, might tip us off. Uh, uh, probably uh, maybe a, a charley horse or a hip flexor. Hopefully not something serious, uh, particularly to his knees. Well, Randy, you're familiar with injuries here in this building. You're sitting up here in the broadcast booth tonight, and you suffered your knee injury right here earlier this season in San Diego. Well, unfortunately, uh, I did, Mike, and uh, that was back in November, and I haven't been able to come back. Uh, it turned into be quite a serious thing, and I had to get a knee operation out of the whole thing. But uh, he's, uh, it doesn't, it looks like he's not in too, too much pain uh, here. Uh, we're getting a little bit of help into the dressing room, but uh, hopefully just a little bit of a bruise. Some ice will fix that up. 342 left in overtime. We're back to action at 2 2 time. The lead pass to center off the mark in San Diego's Darren Bannister. Able to play it in the center. Deasley breaks it up and then Simmer for the goals. Able to play it for Dugay in the center. Wrapped around by Grant. The start after it also. Dugay knocked down. The fans looking for a penalty, but Cassidy watches it go by. Now Grant on right wing able to play it between the two San Diego defenders on net. And Chevrolet plays it for Al Tour behind the goal. Here is Darcy Norton on right wing for San Diego. Able to play it for Dugay into center, and he shoots it to, into the Salt Lake zone. It bounces on edge. Sharples leaves it for Grant. Deasley after with just over three minutes left in the overtime. We're tied at two. Here is McKinnis on the right side, but another San Diego player shaken up to the right of the Salt Lake goal, and it appears to be Darcy Norton, but he's skating on his own towards the San Diego uh, players bench. As Darcy Norton has mentioned earlier, a couple of years with the Minnesota North Stars organization in Kalamazoo. A pretty good goal scorer for the uh, youngster. 39 goals his rookie year, 22 last season, and he's getting on his own into the San Diego zone. Well, he's got a, quite a bit of a limp going right now, Mike. Uh, he's just trying to skate out uh, the little knot or bruise that he, uh, he sustained. I think he got it when he went into forecheck. Uh, he went to hit the, the, the Salt Lake defender into the boards, and he missed him and uh, really crushed himself in there. Eagles and the San Diego goals tomorrow night at the Salt Palace. Salt Lake against Kansas City, 7 p.m. at the Salt Palace. San Diego control with under three minutes left in the overtime. We're tied at two as Melrose sets it up for C.J. Young. Spins to center into the goals territory. Right side for Chernomaz. His shot off the side of the goal as the Chevrolet plays it on the left wing side for the former Golden Eagle, Steve Martinson, in his center. Former member of the Montreal Canadiens. The Martinson moves in. Find a center one, but C.J. Young back checks and able to intercept the pass. Lugs the pass ahead for Chernomaz into the San Diego zone. Shoots it towards the goal, and the goaltender Chevrolet pounces on top and holds on. Randy, we talked about line changes earlier, and how quickly do the teams change lines, uh, particularly in overtime? Well, uh, usually a uh, shift would last somewhere in the neighborhood between uh, 
35 to 45 seconds. Uh, that's, uh, of course, if a player is going at full speed. It's such a fast game, Mike, that uh, you know you really tire out uh, quite quickly if you're going at full pace. Uh, sometimes on the power play, when uh, the play is uh, in somebody's zone, there's not really a lot of skating involved. Uh, your shifts tend to be a little longer, somewhere in a minute to a minute and a half range. From a s uh, strategic standpoint, uh, does Bob Francis uh, want to change his lines quickly here in overtime, or keep a guy like Bureau and Samar and Sweeney keep this line out a little bit longer? Well, I think he wants to slow things down a little bit, give uh, his top line. He wants to keep his top line uh, on the ice as much as possible, uh, especially in this last two minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, each team does, of course, have one 30-second timeout and uh, depending on when they use that, uh, probably towards the very end of this overtime if no one scored yet. Duguay will drop against the Bureau. Uh, Sullivan has uh, taken most of the draws tonight against Mark Bureau, but with he, uh, Sullivan back in the dressing room, Duguay takes the draw. Now on the right side, goals that try and work it free to center, but the Eagles Olsen has to circle back. Leads it for Samard at center, a hustling Bureau into the goal zone, trying to maneuver in. Chevrier pounces on top as Bureau was stationing himself towards that goal, and Chevrier wisely holds on with 2.09 left in the overtime, a 2 2 tie. Well, now there was a case, Mike, of where the Eagles shot it deep into the goal zone from their side of, uh, side of the red line. It would have been an icing penalty had the Gulls got back to touch the puck first, but Mark Bureau being being on side, was able to race in behind the, 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 the Gulls defender, touch the puck first, nullifying the offside uh, icing call. Eagles will try and set up a play here with 2.09 left in the overtime. If the Eagles uh, are able to pot a goal, that would be it. So Lake would come up with win number 31. Here is Samard now being tied up into the corner, holds onto the puck, tries to shovel it uh, for Tim Sweeney. Sweeney now kicks it free, gets away from Nichols, right point for Olsen. His shot blocked off the defense and the rebound taken by Coral. And Robbie Nichols for San Diego plays to center. Under two minutes left in the overtime, a 2-2 standoff. And uh, whirling around at his own defense is the Calgary native, Daryl Olsen, ahead for Rick Lassard who bounces it off the boards into the goal zone. Here's Coral ahead for Duguay on left wing. Into the Salt Lake zone, the former Peoria Riverman, Rod Dahlman, over skates. Eagles play it, but Dahlman steals, and Lassard beautifully pokes it outside the blue line, and Dahlman has no other choice but to shoot it to the Salt Lake defense. Here's Lassard, pokes it ahead for Paul Cruz, into the goal zone, he's poke check, and San Diego whirl the center, but it's off the mark, and Melrose able to play it for Deasley. A lot of turnovers and open ice, 113 left in the overtime, we're tied at two. Sharples himself plays for Kevin Grant behind his own cage, eludes Dolman and then able to feed for Todd Harkins. Floyd steals for Dolman. Puck is loose on the far side with under a minute left in the overtime. We're tied at two. San Diego is uh, on the far side. Harkins for Salt Lake trying to work it free and Floyd just slashes it right back off the boards behind the goal. 50 seconds left in overtime. There's Cruz on left wing. Able to play it rink wide for Deasley into the San Diego zone. Deasley around to her and a goal. Chevrier gets a piece. It's loose. He falls on top. Boy, and Deasley with a great end to end rush. But Chevrier pounces on top with a game on the line. Well, when you have a player like Al Tour out there, he's uh, very cagey. He knows exactly when to pinch and when to stay back. He really forced Brian Deasley into a uh, a bad angle there, and Chevrier just uh, went down, covered all the net possible. Uh, the puck came sliding into him, and he froze it. And uh, a few as we see Deasley after. coming down the far boards here, El Tour has a good position on him. Deasley has trouble cutting in. Uh, he's trying to lean on uh, Tour to get a better position, but uh, just no possible way. Uh, Chevrier, seeing that Deasley can't lift the puck in the air, just lays down and lets the puck. Uh, comes sliding into him and he uh, holds on to it for a whistle. Brian Deasley close to scoring his 20th goal of the season. He scored 16 in his rookie year last year for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles out of the University of Michigan. 36 seconds left. If we're still tied when the 36 seconds expire, we will go to a shootout. And what a fitting end to the broadcast here tonight. Well, it would be very, it's put in for the excitement of the crowd and uh, they're being treated to a great game here tonight, Mike. Here is Duguay tries to work in, but Chernomaz steals at his own defense. So, so Duguay plays for San Diego ahead for Martinson, but back checking is Marco Siki, and he's able to wheel out of there. Watched by Duguay ahead for Young at center. 18 seconds left in the overtime. Young moving in, but it's offside, I believe, on the far wing, as uh, we have uh, only 16 seconds left. 
I believe the referee, Cassidy, blew that down, and Bob Francis very upset. Steve Gannett also with the referee. Well, I think uh, that David Cassidy uh, thought that uh, his linesmen uh, weren't in position to make the call. He was standing right on the blue line, and uh, as you mentioned before, Mike, has uh, done a lot of games as a linesman, so he was right there, and uh, he blew the, the offsides down himself. I think Bob Francis and Jamie Hislop feel it's the responsibility of the linesman to make that call. Cassidy blowing the whistle. Nonetheless, the faceoff will be just outside the blue line with only 16 seconds left in overtime. The line of uh, Bureau, Chernomaz, and Sweeney now on the defense of Marco Siki and Rick Lassard is a very tired group of Golden Eagle players. Uh, Randy Busick, I'm sure the same for San Diego. Here is the Eagle player on left wing, Rick Lassard. Has to spin back at center and shoots it deep into the San Diego zone. Ten seconds left in the overtime. Eagles trying to work it free. San Diego played on the boards. Four seconds left and they freeze it. So we'll have a face off deep into the San Diego zone. And if they are still tied, Randy, we'll end this thing with the shootout. Well, it appears right now, Mike, uh, that it is going to go into a shootout. It might be a good time for us to uh, just explain exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, each team is going to be allowed to pick five uh, players uh, to to uh, to go down on the opposite goalie, uh, picked by the coach, uh, uh, probably his top goal scorers or uh, the ones that are the shiftiest, and uh, it'll be a best of five for each team. So whoever scores the most goals after the five shooters are up will win the game. Interestingly enough, the Eagles have lost two shootout games and have not scored a shootout goal. So we'll see if uh, the Eagles can break that here tonight. Four seconds left in the overtime period. Faceoff will be just inside the blue line to the left of Chevry in San Diego with the Mike O'Connell have called a timeout. We've had a long game here tonight, uh, Randy Busick. It's uh, gone along very slowly here tonight in San Diego. A lot of stoppages, good goaltending here tonight, some activities during the intermission, and it's been a very, very interesting game. Uh, we'll draw up now as Dugay has been tossed out of the uh, face-off area. Osiki is shot blocked off by McKinnis and that's it. We will go to a shootout. We have played 65 minutes and we're still tied at two, but we have a little bit more here in the center ice area. Robbie Nichols, Rich Chernamaz, Rod Dahlman, Mark Bureau as the teams have battled uh, through 65 minutes. They're still tied. They battled 60 minutes last night and they're very, very feisty here in San Diego and Things getting a little more heated in San Diego. Well, Robbie Nichols is a, is really a thorn in the Eagles' side. Has been all night and uh, has been uh, not only this year, but when he played uh, for the Phoenix uh, Roadrunners. And uh, he, he's really a pester. He really gets under your skin. And uh, he's, he does a good job at it. He draws a lot of penalties on himself and uh, puts his team in a powerful situation quite a bit. But we have a little bit more here as everybody into the fracas. Ron Duguay's on top of the pile. What a red, right, and gold of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Duguay and Dean Morton, the defenseman, over a couple of sprawling Salt Lake players. It really started with Chernomaz and Ravi Nichols and has gone from there. And now on the far wing, Mark Bureau and the player Rod Dahlman involved in a little fracas. No, I, I'm not sure exactly what happens if someone gets a game misconduct. I believe, Mike, they won't be eligible to shoot in the no, shootout. No, definitely not. Penalties here will not to carry on to the shootout. And Dahlman throws a couple of punches over the linesman. Bureau trying to fight back, and the linesman trying to separate. Boy, we've had a little bit of everything here tonight. It's pretty, pretty quiet as far as the fisticuffs are concerned, but this game, which has gone on, for a while here tonight in San Diego. I think the players are frustrated as they're all still milling around in the Salt Lake Zone with the game, the regulation in overtime concluding here. But Randy, they're still milling around on the far side and very intent over there as well. A lot of dancing around. What are they saying in that file? <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on TV right now, Mike, to tell you the truth, but uh, the way David Cassidy has uh, refereed this game, he's allowed a lot of this to go on and go on and go on, and now it's uh, starting to come to a head, and uh, it's kind of a sad situation here, Mike. It's been such an entertaining hockey game to see it end in this kind of manner. Warren Sharples on one knee surveys the action. 
Ron Duguay at the blue line. Mark Bureau escorted to the Salt Lake dressing room. I'm sure he's frustrated because he's such a dangerous player offensively. He'd love to be involved in the shootout. And San Diego having some tough players out there. They had Rob Norman, Robbie Nichols against the skill guys for Salt Lake. And I don't think Mike O'Connell is too upset to have a guy like Bureau off the ice. Well, it, it was a very uh, uneven soft as far as that goes. You see Mark Bureau, he's headed off into the dressing room. Uh, presumably he won't be eligible to shoot in the shootout, uh, which is going to be a great loss for the Eagles because uh, normally he would be one of the players uh, that usually leads them off in this five-man shootout. Uh, uh, yeah, if you look at who uh, went off with him, it would be Rod Dahlman, and I uh, would bet my bottom dollar that he wasn't going to be involved in the five-man shootout anyways. Yeah, they had their tough uh, line out late, uh, more of a defensive line, and with a guy like Bureau off the ice, and Chernomaz probably also, or Andy Busick, because Chernomaz was involved uh, as well, although he's skating to the near wing. Uh, We'll see if he stays on for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. The Eagles and the Gulls tied at two. We'll come back with a shootout in just a moment here from the Sports Arena. Western Week. February 11th through the 15th, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. We've got it. Wheel 14. Enjoy an evening at Partners, Ogden or Holiday. Famous for truly unique atmosphere and really good food. Partners specialize in fresh seafood and tender aged beef featuring our own homemade recipes. We serve dollar-saving early bird specials 5 to 6.30 p.m. every Monday through Thursday. Choose from six of our most popular entrees. Complete dinners at lunchtime prices. Enjoy the best for less at Partners, 337 31st Street in Ogden and 4668 South Holiday Boulevard, Holiday. We're back in San Diego. We, at this point, know there have been four players escorted to the dressing room. Rod Dahlman. Rob McKinnis and Robbie Nichols. Mark Bureau, the only player for Salt Lake. Perhaps Rich Chernomaz will also be led to the dressing room, but not at this particular point. A 2-2 tie here through 65 minutes. The shots, by the way, two apiece in the overtime. 28 for Salt Lake in the game, 34 for San Diego. The Eagles and the Gulls. The Eagles led 2-0 through a total of uh, 40 minutes, but the goal scored twice in the third period. The goal by Darcy Norton and Darren Lowe to, to tie the game. The Eagles had that lead through 40, but then San Diego came back in the final stanza. Well, San Diego showed a lot of grit and determination by being be able to uh, claw and fight their way back into this hockey game. Uh, a couple of great goals uh, in this third period uh, to tie the score at two. Uh, a lot of great action. Uh, uh, Warren Sharples was outstanding again in the third period, or else uh, they could have uh, very easily have lost this game too. Uh, the first goal uh, by Darcy Norton on a great setup uh, by Ron Duguay. Norton has a step on the defenseman, uh, comes in around, uh, sees Sharples going down and slides it just uh, just inside the goal post on the, on the far side. Uh, Sharples had good position, uh, did his best to make the save, but uh, Norton just slid it past him. Uh, a good scoring play by Darcy Norton. On the second goal, uh, Darren Lowe, uh, it was all set up by Dave Coral uh, up at the blue line. Uh, s s jumped, jumped in uh, to uh, prevent the, the puck from squirting outside the blue line. So he was the one that really uh, initiated this whole goal from happening. Uh, Coral knocks it down deep to Larry Floyd. Larry Floyd sees uh, Darren Lowe out in front, throws it out to Lowe, and Lowe just shovels it in the net behind Warren Sharples. Uh, another great scoring uh, ch uh, goal uh, by the Gulls. All alone in front of the net, and that to tie the game. The penalties all at the five minute mark in overtime. Rod Dolman for San Diego, a five minute fighting major and a 10 minute misconduct. Rob McKinnis, a 10 minute misconduct and Robbie Nichols, a 10 minute misconduct for San Diego. The only Eagles off the ice. Mark Bureau, five for fighting and a 10 minute misconduct. Rick Lassard, a 10 minute misconduct. So again, those are the players off for the Eagles and the Gulls. We go to the shootout. The Gulls, one shootout game. They beat Kansas City, so like 0-2 
in shootout games and have not scored a shootout goal all season long. But a guy that had 97 points last year for the Golden Eagles was the American-born Rookie of the Year in the IHL last season, Tim Sweeney. And uh, he will be the first shooter for Salt Lake. Tim Sweeney has a lot of great moves, but uh, uh, they had a shootout situation in the Goodwill games, and he came down, and actually Warren Sharples was playing for the Canadian team, and he went uh, between his legs with his shot. So uh, Tim Sweeney, that might be one of the first places he looks when he goes down to shoot. And here is Sweeney now for the Golden Eagles. It's a penalty shot. All the players off the ice. Sweeney in on goal. He shoots. He scores. Tim Sweeney goes upstairs, glove side. one nothing Eagles here in the shootout. Well, what a great shot by Tim Sweeney. Uh, uh, Chevrolet came way out to cut down the angle, uh, started backing into his net. Sweeney has his head up the whole time, spots an open uh, uh, corner uh, high over the glove, and makes no mistake by throwing it up. And uh, the Eagles are now up one to nothing in the shootout. Larry Floyd, the leading point scorer for San Diego, is the shooter for the goals. And on that, he stops, he shoots, Sharples, a glove save. Great save by Warren Sharples. Boy, he stood his ground there. Uh, Larry Floyd, a uh, sniper in this league. Uh, Give him a couple of shootout chances, and he's going to score on most of them. But Warren Sharples was just outstanding. What a quick glove he has. Warren Sharples' first shootout this year. Steve Gannett was in the Nets, uh, the other two shootout games. Here's Rich Chernamaz. 48 goals a couple of years ago, 101 points. Chernamaz in on net. He stops, he shoots, he scores! Rich Chernamaz makes it 2 0 here in the best of five, and that puts San Diego in quite a hole as Chernamaz rifles it behind Chevrier. Well, how about that, Mike? What a great shot by Rich Chernamaz. Uh, he's got an unbelievable wrist shot, quite, uh, quick release, and uh, deadly accurate. He made no mistake, put it on the blocker side of Elaine Chevrier, and the Eagles are up by two now. Darcy Norton, who scored the first goal for San Diego, and he shoots. Sharples gets a piece, he holds on. Boy, and well, if the Eagles can score here, they'll put this uh, game pretty much out of reach. Well, uh, they'll, uh, of course, have three out of the five and uh, have a very good chance of uh, winning this game now. Great save by Warren Sharples. Warren Sharples keeps his glove hand a little bit lower, and uh, perhaps uh, the shooters coming in on him can see a little bit of uh, light high over his glove because that's where both of uh, the shooters have gone so far. C.J. Young, the rookie for Salt Lake, on goal. He stops. Chevrier gets a piece, he holds on as C.J. Young went for the deep. Well, I think uh, C.J. Young really wanted to shoot there, but uh, Chevrier uh, came out uh, rushing at him and uh, forced uh, C.J. to try and go around him. Uh, Chevrier got a pat on the, uh, on the ground to, to steer that shot wide. 31 goals last year for Darren Lowe, the third shooter for San Diego. He shoots it over top of the net as Sharples forced him, and Lowe shot it high. How about that? Uh, I, I see a real trend happening here. Uh, everybody has gone high to the glove side on Warren Sharples, and uh, they've been successful all three times. Ryan Deasley in his second full season for Salt Lake out of the University of Michigan. If he scores here, the game is over, and the Eagles will pick up the victory. Here's Deasley on the, sh the fourth shot. In on goal. He stops. He shoots. Chevrier gets a piece in. Deasley is stopped. What a great split save by Elaine Chevrier. Deasley uh, came in, had a lot of good speed, made a couple of great moves, went to slide it underneath the, sh the sprawled out Chevrier, but just got it up a little too high and hit him in the midsection. Had he been able to Ball keep it on the ice, perhaps could have gone in. If Simmer fails to score here, the Eagles pick up the victory. The former Golden Eagle, Charlie Simmer, in on net. He stops. He's in. He shoots. He scores. Charlie Simmer for San Diego. Twice 50 goals for the Los Angeles Kings. He beats Sharples. It's 2-1 through four shots in the shootout. How exciting is this, Mike? What a great move by Charlie Simmer. A little bit of a stutter step there. Uh, forcing Sharples to go down and then uh, had his legs open there, slid it right underneath of him. 63 goals last year. Corey Lyons in on net. He stops, he shoots, he scores. Let's see. No, no, no goal. As it's a bounce right back out, the referee Cassidy immediately signaled no goal. Well, that was a great shot by Corey Lyons. It just hit the far post and that came bouncing right out. David Cassidy is standing right there on the goal line and immediately waved that one off. Well, the goals can tie the game or the Eagles will win it. Dugan in on goal, he stops, he shoots, and Sharples the save, it's over! The Golden Eagles have picked up a scintillating 3-2 win. Everybody out to congratulate Warren Sharples who stops a guy 
12 years in the National Hockey League, Ron Dugain. How do you like that? The Eagles win it 3-2 in a shootout. What an outstanding save by Warren Sharples. Ron Dugay was just beside himself. He was talking. I can't believe he stopped that. He made a great move. Sharples was down and out as he went to slide it into the open net. Sharples got his big uh, glove hand over and uh, corralled the puck in. Unbelievable as Steve Kinnett comes over to congratulate his fellow netminder. A heck of a performance for Warren Sharples. And how do you like that? He stops, of all players, Ron Dugay in the shootout to present the Salt Lake 3-2 shootout win. That's the final here in San Diego, and we'll be right back to wrap it up in just a moment. What's that cool going down? What's that chill rushing through you? What's that that takes your breath away? That's the taste of In 1991, Gadgets wants to make a commitment to Salt Lake City to sell electronics lower than anybody in town. We have the lowest overhead, and it makes sense. We're the lowest price. Right now, we have an under $100 sale in the audio department. Everything's on sale. We have a Fisher CD player, eight times over sampling, $99. A dual cassette deck, Fisher, $99. And three-way 10-inch speakers, $99. Buy one, get one free at Gadgets Audio Sale now. With Hardy's Family Value Menu, Mom and Dad can feed themselves and their four kids for under $10. Dad can feed himself and his son's basketball team for under $10. Mom can feed herself for three kids, a neighbor's kid, and a kid she doesn't even know for under $10. Hardy's Family Value Menu is designed for families who want a lot of delicious food for not a lot of money. Like hamburgers for 59 cents, cheeseburgers for 69 cents, and hot dogs for 79 cents. Hardy's Family Value Menu, the return of good old family values. Hey, you can eat that last Friday. Paw Computers, 845 South Main and Bountiful, specialize in contemporary computer classes. Expert instructors use state-of-the-art techniques to teach you how to use your computer. You see the instructor's entries and compare with your own hands-on terminal. Train to use Macintosh or IBM-compatible computers. Register now for convenient beginning, intermediate, or advanced classes for word processing, spreadsheets, even desktop publishing. Call 295-2299 now and get a free T-shirt and mouse pad with your registration. Paw Computers in Bountiful. Welcome back, everyone, to the Sports Arena in San Diego, California. I'm Mike Barrick alongside Randy Busick. Randy, a great win, but before we talk about it, we're going to send it down to ice level with Mike Runge, who has Warren Sharples, the star of tonight's game. Mike Runge with winning goaltender Warren Sharples. Warren, uh, a long evening in San Diego. You come out the winner in a in a shootout. And tell us about that last attempt by Ron Duguay. You've got an NHL veteran bearing down on you. You need, you need to hold him out of there. Tell me what happened. Yeah, well, first I've got Charlie Simmer to worry about, and then Ron Duguay. You know, <laughs> what am I doing here? But, uh, you know, Dukes came down and uh, you know, put a pretty good move on me, and really he beat me and uh, had me going the wrong way, but he just wasn't able to lift the puck up over my arm. It was just a desperation play on my part. Just, you know, put my arm out there and hope it hits me, and it did. As a goaltender, how do you feel about the shootout? I mean, this really puts the pressure on you guys. Yeah, the, the pressure isn't the thing that bothers me. The thing that bothers me is that we're playing out there playing a team sport for, in this case, 65 minutes, and then we determine a game on the on the basis of individual skill. And to me, it doesn't really jive that way, but it's exciting for the fans, and, uh, you know, it's a big win when you win. It's unfortunate when you lose. Well, it was a big win. It was a big, big win for the Salt Lake fans. A lot of them who came down here. Does that help you out an awful lot, the Screaming Eagle Booster Club making it here into uh, San Diego? It was nice having uh, a few familiar faces from the Salt Palace around and nice to have a few people on our side. I know uh, for whatever reasons I'm not too popular here, so it's nice to have a few people up there that are cheering for me. I think if they got to know you, you'd be real popular here in San Diego. Hey, I'm a nice guy. What can I tell you? That's what I've heard. Warren Sharples, winning goaltender for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Get on in there, get your well-deserved shower, and we'll see you next game. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rungi. Well, it, it was fun here tonight. Uh, Randy Busick, a, a great victory. Warren Sharp was excited about it. And uh, it was uh, fun for the fans back in Salt Lake. Well, it was a total team effort uh, by everybody. Just a super game, fun to watch and fun to call. Uh, it showed just about every aspect uh, that this game of hockey has to offer. A little bit of rough and tumble stuff, a lot of uh, scoring, and some uh, great goaltending. Well, Warren Sharples, 30 saves here tonight. Salt Lake win it 3-2. to two. 
in a shootout. Hope you enjoyed it. The Eagles in Kansas City tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at the Salt Palace. And, of course, February 28th, the Eagles and the Gulls right here on KXIV. For Randy Busick, I'm Mike Barrick saying so long and have a pleasant good evening. Live coverage of IHL professional hockey on Real 14 has been brought to you by Hardee's, Zions Bank, and Coca-Cola.